I think you were 16. You stood at school when you first started coming to the Warriors and uh, we put you in a sandpit. Probably where you belong because of your age, uh, but it wasn't uh, making sandcastles, man. <laughs> no, yeah, I remember those days, months. I remember coming out um, after school and getting asked to come down and train with you guys a few times. Um, yeah, I can just remember you had to put those suits on and jump yeah. in the, the sandpit at the back of the stadium. And it was guys like Jerry C, C, yourself, Fika Paliasina, Mark Tukey. Justin Morgan, and yeah, I suppose you just had to jump in and, and do what everyone else was doing. So I was a young kid there trying my best, battling away against um, some pretty big boys, but um, hey, it all, it all, I suppose, helped me in the long run. In the preseason, obviously, we were young kids, so we, we could run a bit. Um, and we always get those coat hangers, they were called. We had to start on the sideline, go around the post, back up and back. We had to get them on certain times, and and big Tukes always used to struggle a bit in those, so um. I think we had to have turns that every time we come around the post, we had to get behind him and push him to get his speed up so we could hope to get the times. But um, back then, it was anything to get those times, bro, because there were some tough sessions when I was a young kid. So we didn't mind helping out the older boys there if we had to. I mean, what do you remember? First of all, we, we, we know the debut match, but when you got the call from Ando, because you've been coming for a little while, training, when it became a realisation for something you dreamed about for so long that you were going to be playing, um, what, what did it look, look like? I was training with you guys, like, you know, after school, and I think I was studying with Jerome Party and Louis Anderson, who done a course at um, Manukau Tech. But I think the course was pretty much designed so that Ando could call us up at any time and make us come train. So um, <laughs> we used to get pulled out of a lot of sessions. But but I don't know, it just all happened really quickly, months. You know, I was at school, and then all of a sudden, Ando gave us a call and said, you know, you're going to have a game this weekend. And yeah, it was just happened really quickly, man. I didn't, you know, obviously I enjoyed what I was doing. I, I signed with the club, but you know, things just happened really, really quickly, man. And uh, you know, I'm grateful for, for Ando for giving me a crack, even though I was pretty nervous before that game. But, um, you know, it was good. Actually, I think you were my roomie, weren't you? <laughs> Might have been. For that game in usually, Wellington. Yeah, I usually was. I remember you were the young man. And uh, what you, were, you weren't you were even um, 18 years of age at the time, were you? Nah, not for the first bit. I remember, yeah, you got, I wasn't even allowed to go out with you guys after games. <laughs> That probably hurt you more than anything else. Uh, your first try for the Warriors, uh, you scored many. Uh, do you remember? Yeah, I remember pretty clearly, really. Um, there was a young hooker there that I got a little short ball off. I think um, <laughs> you um, you broke a tackle or did you shrug off Henry Perinara, was it? And then, um, yeah, I remember supporting up on the inside and you put me over, mate. And, um, yeah, you made sure I knew about it too afterwards. So um, <laughs> I was always grateful for that month as well. Lovely little offload there, bro. Well, it's the one try assist in my whole career, so I thought um, you, you must remember it. I'm glad you did remember it, and it's not just me who, who brings that up, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, mate, I remember it clearly, bro. When you think about your first year, um, and it was a massive year, uh, the exposure to success early, obviously you played in the final series in your debut year. What were the early lessons that uh, really shaped you? Yeah, it was, there were some hard lessons too, Mons. It wasn't always easy. Um, you know, I sort of just got tagged along, I felt like, with the success of you guys. So I just played a small role, really. I don't know, when I think back now, I think, I don't know how I got through those games, really. I didn't really know what I was doing for, for most of it. It was um, pretty much pass the ball to Ali and support him, really, was my game plan going in. So, um, I, I honestly, what he could do as a back rower now, I think, mate, is if I had to defend against him now, it'd be so hard. You know what he's like, Monty. He had everything. He had everything. At that time, he was absolutely on fire. Obviously, Stacey was most probably the GOAT, really, at the time. And you know, just, I, just, I really admired Stacey. He was such a good fellow. He helped me out so much when I was a young kid. You know, playing alongside him, he most probably carried the team, and I just snuck in there behind him and tagged along a bit. But yeah, he was definitely the main man. And I went from playing against my mates in school to playing in a row pretty much within a couple of, couple of weeks, really. So it was just... Um, yeah, a bit surreal. What about some of the games? I mean, debut matches are one thing, but just some of the games for whatever reason. You remember that game, Monster? Do you remember that game against Canberra uh, in the semi final? Yes. It? I think that was one of the most intense games I believe I've, I've played in. And Stacey got the, the drop goal in. Yep. I remember that. I remember the atmosphere there. It was unbelievable. Ruben Wicky was playing for Canberra. Uh, who was Mark McClendon was there. 
remember when Jason Bugarelli dropped it over the line? Oh yes, I remember. And I don't think Jason Bugarelli will ever forget uh, because all he had to do was to score that, hold the ball is over the line, they win. But even Rubens yeah. made mention of that game and how physical it was and how hard it was. That game and that run going in, probably that game zapped it out of us more than anything else. I mean, yeah. Eric gave away um, some tickets for that match um, and, and, and it was a huge one. Uh, and it was funny you bring that up too because I remember the intensity. What else do you remember of, of, of that game? Because they, they had a big forward pack too. Oh, man, it just it was so physical. I was a young kid at the time, but man, it was just... And it was end-to-end because -end, um, Richard Villasanti, he was playing... He was killing it at that stage too. And I can remember him just coming off the back fence off kickoffs. And then Ruben would be carrying like like a madman. And I remember the last set, how Stacey got the win. Yeah. I, don't, I, mean, I don't know how he shifted the ball on play two. He made a little bit of a break. He shifted it back, bang, and then he got in the pocket and, and kicked the one, you know. He did, pretty much did it you know, all on his own back. And I remember the time he was injured too. He had a bad groin. Yeah. And he was hardly training. He wasn't hardly training. You know, he was just getting ready, getting up for games. And Arwen was there. Arwen was a beast too. Yeah, it was, it was a crazy game. Tommy, what do you, what do you think you, you, you left so soon, man? I mean, you know, you only had two years. The first year was an amazing year. Second year was probably not as successful for, for the club. Uh, there were scary times. But uh, was that always something that you thought you were going to do because of your dad on the, the career path he took? Yeah, um, oh, I, got, I got a crack pretty early and then... I think you still had Lance or higher, Stacey Jones or, or Miles in front of me really, so I sort of got a shot quite early and then, you know, I, then, I think once those guys come back from injury, I sort of thought, well, I'm not really going to get another game here, but I'd already played, you know, a handful of games and I was lucky enough to play for New Zealand too at the time. So, you know, I thought, you know, the opportunity to maybe go over there and play some first grade or being stuck behind the likes of Stacey and, um, and Lance. I sort of thought it was the best way for me to go. So I just, I don't think people expected it. It was a pretty ballsy call mm -hmm. really at the time. Went to London Broncos. It wasn't a big club. Um, but I just thought, you know, get some experience playing playing first grade and, and, you know, leading a team around the park, you know, or sit back behind, um, you know, two really good players that I, I, I definitely was behind at the time. So, you know, I just took that option then. And um, I also didn't really, I was a bit naive eh, when I decided to go. I thought, oh, yeah, it'd be all right, you know, but, and I remember ringing up my mum and asking her how to use the washing machine because I didn't even know how to use a washing machine. I was living by myself. <laughs> so she was there telling me. And then, yeah, it was. I was at a club, though. We had um, a fair few overseas boys, which I um, really enjoyed. But I reckon I learned a lot in those years, man. Not just a rugby league thing, just about growing up myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd been at home my whole life. We had a big family, lived in Papatoe there. Everything around me. So I think for me to go out and step outside my comfort zone and and just go off on myself. I thought, um, you know, when I look back at it now, I think it was a, mm. you know, I learned so much, you know, off the field too. Well, they say absence makes the heart grow fonder, mate. And um, was that the case with you when you when you left? I mean, it was great term in terms of um, learning a bit more and growing. But um, you're away from that jersey you dreamt of from a young age. Yeah, yeah, it was, man. It was, and it was something. Even when I went to Wigan after that, um, and then um, playing there. There's always in the back of my mind, I always wanted to go back and sort of prove myself properly at the Warriors. Um, you know, was, my family was there, everyone's there. My, they all watched the Warriors, so, you know, I think when the opportunity to come, to come, come back to the NRL, it was, it was between them and another club. Well, actually, I was, I was already going to go to South really, with, with Mark Maguire, who was my coach at the time. I remember going to his house here in Wigan and pretty much making the, you know, agreeing to the deal and then... The Warriors came in for me and I had to ring them up and tell them, mate, look, I've been away for so long, man. The opportunity to go back and play at the Warriors in front of my family, I said, I just can't turn that down. Mm. You know, so, you know, he agreed. He, he sort of, he was pretty cool with it. You know, I'm good friends imagine. You know, he understood the reason I'd been away for so long. I thought just, you know, if I'm going to go back to the NRL, I'd rather go back to the Warriors and, you know, that's what, that was my decision to go back. Interesting, bro, because you signed in 2011, but you didn't come back till 2013. Uh, that in itself is, is weird. I want to know the story behind that. But then also, who was going to be the coach? Who did you think was going to be the coach? Because when you signed, it was Ivan. Uh, then you thought it was going to be Bluey, potentially. Uh, but then it ended up being Matthew Elliott. Uh, so when you signed, how did you sign? And um, who did you think was going to be your coach? Well, Bluey was the one who was tipping me up. He's the one who called me when I was over here. I think we had just won the Challenge Cup there. 
and he, he sort of ran me up and he was giving me a job. So I didn't even get to play on the bluey. He didn't get then Tony Aro got the job for the back end of the year. And then Al Matthew Elliott came in and then Andrew McFadden really in, in the four years I was there. So yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy um, how it all panned out. Um, yeah, maybe looking back on it now, months, you know, it's maybe a reason, you know, we maybe weren't too successful. I think when you think about teams I've had at Wigan, there's always a really consistency from the top to the bottom. Matthew Elliott was, was the first there, 44.8% uh, win uh, ratio. But um, how did you find him? He wasn't the one you thought it was going to be. Uh, but, you know, he, was, he, he wasn't there for long. Yeah, he's different. I, I like I like Matthew as a, as a person. You know, he's very smart. He thinks a bit outside the box. Um, like I said, I didn't know too much about him before he got the job. Um, met him, and yeah, just I don't know. Just we didn't really get going. Most probably be the best word, but you know, um, yeah, like as a person, I, I really liked him. I liked what he did. He brought in like your facilities at the club. They were, were amazing when I first got there. Mm. You know, you had altitude check with everything. So, you know, I, I was blown away by that, really, when I went back. I remember he just um, went for breakfast one day in the, in the hotel and I, he shook my hand. It was a, I could tell something was up the way yeah. he shook it. You know, it wasn't just like a normal good morning. And then we all went back home and, and he didn't come back and messaged us and called us a bit later. But, yeah, it was a bit of a crazy how that one panned out. It's the first time I've, I've sort of had in my career, Coach Lee Magia, so... Yeah, it wasn't ideal. How did uh, McFadden shake your hand? What was he like a, 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 as a coach? Because he's there for a, a bit of time in terms of uh, a little bit longer than Elliot. Yeah, I really like Andrew as a coach. I rate him too. I think he's a really good coach. I learned a lot of him when I first come back, man. Um, being a halfback in that. I remember I had a pretty good chat with him once when I got back. I, I don't reckon I was playing the best and I was trying to find my feet a bit. And, and we, he sat down with me and had a really good chat and Spoke about what he what he thought I needed to do, what he thought the differences between Super League and the NRL, and where I needed to improve. So I knuckled down and, and got that, you know. But I was really grateful for for the lessons he taught me, man. You know, when he's talking about the the difference between the Super League and the NRL for you transitioning back to the NRL, uh, what did you find difficult? What did you find easy? And, and and what are the differences in your mind? Yeah, there's a few things. Once, look, I was at a pretty successful team over here in Wigan. You know, we, we played a certain style that I suppose most of I like to play. But I think the thing I learned back, you know, when you go back to the NRL, is just the natural ability ability of some of the players. You know, defensively, that we were like very system, you know, like everyone stayed in their lane, no one would jam where back there you had people with just natural instincts that would just read stuff. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest thing that Cappy sort of explained to me, you know, you you won't just get a flat line when you're playing in the NRL. You'll have someone who can just come out and make a decision. You know, and it's back their natural ability. So, because he coached in the Super League too, he was over at um, Catalans too. So, those were the two differences he sort of told me. And once I sort of got my head around that and, and how to play the depths, you play into the line, whether you play early or play play all the way into the line, and understanding those sort of things and the different shapes you can throw, um, sort of helped me a lot. Now you mentioned uh, natural talent, well Cappy did as well. When you come back and you know the, you come back and seen the period um, after these young guys in the under 20s, under 19s have been playing so well, uh, what do you think of the, the homegrown talent um, being away for so long? Oh yeah, amazing, amazing. I think he's won, we won like, how many under 20 comps did we win at that yeah, time? Uh, two or three a in, in, a, in, a, in a short succession. Yeah, yeah there's just so much talent, man. So much raw talent. That's what I, I, I really... You know, I remember speaking to people back in, in the UK, they're like, you know, well, what do you reckon? I said, man, this is so much raw talent. Guys, this can play rugby league. You know, you got to try to harness it and, and, and mould it. But in terms of just natural football IQ, I think, you know, some talent, you know. Played the, the other day we played, oh, I was injured, but we played against some um, Carlos to my brother. He, um, he's playing really well over here, mate. And just, I remember seeing him when he first come through. He's a freak, man. Mm -hmm. You know, playing six. Unbelievable. He's in the team with Conrad Aral. Ben Henry. Oh, when I remember seeing Ben Henry play, I know he got injured and he played a bit, but I don't think we really saw his true potential. He was an unbelievable player. So resilient. I remember playing with him that year. He had his knee, and he was literally playing on one knee. Like, I'd, I'd seen people do that, but they're more older players, yeah. more experienced, you know, who, who could manage their body during the week, you know, wouldn't run, stay on the bike, 
But this guy was doing that when he was 23, 24, man, and then still coming out and putting unbelievable performances on the weekend, you know. Out of position too, sometimes. Kofi chuck him at centre and put him in the back row and just so versatile. You know, and I always thought, man, he's one guy that we didn't really see the full potential, man. Unbelievable person too. I think Nani's had a tremendous career now in the All Blacks. Um, we've actually both done our knees together, AC, AC, ACLs. So um, I remember doing a lot of rehab with him. And he was, at the time, he was thinking about going back to, to rugby. Eh? And he asked me what I thought. I didn't know he was going to be that good at rugby, so I didn't know what to say to him. <laughs> what did you say? If I knew he was going to be an All Black, it would have been an easy answer. Eh? But um, <laughs> I hadn't seen him play. But man, he was a, he was a phenomenal talent. Really good. A lot of energy. You know, Tui Lola here again, man. Freak. Fast. I can remember him just being so powerful and quick. He's actually having a great... He, we played on the weekend. He's having a great season so far. He's having a great season over here. So um, it's good seeing those guys develop and come through. You know, I, like, I like to see it most probably transfer into the top team a bit more, man. I think we all would, eh, as ex-players. Mm. You know, but, um, yeah, there's definitely was some, some tremendous talent back in New Zealand. Mm, there's uh, two boys that I've always admired uh, watching them play. I uh, played against one, and Ryan Hoffman, and the other one was Sam Tompkins. Now, you know them uh, well because you've played in the Warriors colours with them and also uh, the Wigan Warriors colours with them. Uh, talk to me about them, um, how we got Sammy here, and uh, just just what you remember of the time with them in, in that Warriors jumper. Yeah, obviously I know Sammy really well. Good friend of mine. Some great years here. They played a lot of time together. Um, you know, Sammy came, I remember, he, had, he was absolutely killing the Super League. And they, they signed him when he was back. And um, I don't know if we saw the best of Sammy. I think we, you know, I knew he was a lot better than what we've seen. And just through injury, you know, done his knee, PCL. We didn't maybe see the best of him, but I think we definitely saw the best of Ryan Hoffman and just what he brings. Ultra professional. And just a really good guy, man. And um, yeah, I love playing with both of those guys. Two tremendous players, man. Still talk to them too, man. Spoke to Hoffy the other week. So, um, you know, I, mean, I saw Sammy at the game on the weekend. So, it was really good. When you think about your career, it's like a career of two halves. Uh, earlier on and when you come back. Um, how would you define each, like, in terms of what you learned, the biggest learnings of uh, that first period, 2003 to 2004, and what you think you left there with the club, and then the same for uh, your next stint, 2013 to 15. You know, I was so young, I was 17 at the time, playing and, you know, chucked in there, and I learned about the scrutiny that, you know, you have to deal with being a professional athlete, you know, and, and you, you just build up your confidence, I suppose, and, and, and you trust the people you need to trust and listen to. I think that's one thing you you can't listen to too many people, man. Yeah. You know you got to pick a few core people that you trust, and you know they will tell you the truth. And the rest you just got to you know let it slide, man. You can't carry other people with burdens, man. You just got to do your own thing. So I think going away, I, I sort of went, went to London, really enjoyed it, and that's most probably what I learned. That's why I wanted to come back and have another crack because I thought I could do a bit better. And then my second stint back, I thought I played all right. I would have liked to have been a bit more successful as a group. Man, I'll be honest, I, you know, I, I really, after tasting it at Wigan, I, I would love for the Warriors to have that, but, um, yeah, it just, it just wasn't to be. I, I really enjoyed playing, though, playing there. And all, I met some great people, bro. I um, had a great time. Um, yeah, I learned so much. So, uh, you know, I, I look back with positive memories, bro. Well, Tommy, once a warrior, always a warrior. We thank you so much for your huge contributions and both stints uh, early on and then uh, later in life, man. Cool, bro. Thank you very much, Monty. Legend. And uh, thank you for choosing Once a Warrior. Join me next week as we have one of your favourite warriors in studio with me once again, only here on Sky Sport. Now Beatham, stepping, looking to do likewise. Gets away from the Piranara tackle. Comes the black block, Turns it back on the inside with Thomas Luluai, who grabs the first try of his NRL career. Luluai wrestles over. Second attempt, Thomas Lillowai.